Okay, this video is an open letter to neurologists. So if you're a neurologist or if you have a friend who's a neurologist, if you go to a neurologist, you can recommend that they watch this video. You know, I mostly work currently as a neuroradiologist. I used to do imaging guided surgery and I've done a whole bunch of other things in my past. I used to also run a spinal injection clinic doing all the epidural steroids, nerve root blocks and stuff, tons of spine biopsies. So I've done all kinds of different things in the central nervous system. I consider being an imaging guided um, endovascular brain surgeon at one time, so I did a half a fellowship in that. So I got a lot of experience in this and did a fellowship previously at Harvard Vascular Disease. So anyways, I got a lot of experience in the central nervous system. I've been running conferences on it for, gosh, over a decade. So anyways, what I want to share with you is um, there's stuff that is not in your neurology textbooks. I've read the Ivy League textbooks of neurology, and quite frankly, they're far out of date. They're bogus. They're wrong. So this is to help you take care of your patients. And I talk to neurologists all the time, and they're very nice, and they do the best they can to help their patients. Um, so this will help you update your educations and help your patients. So first of all, you know, all this stuff about Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. That's a bunch of nonsense. Alzheimer's is a bit of a joke of a diagnosis. There's no historical finding. There's no physical exam finding. There's no laboratory finding. The imaging of it is not very reliable. The autopsy study is not reliable. And there's no treatment, okay? The whole thing is kind of a big joke. The best theory of dementia is the Jack Delatory call it the mouse theory of chronic cerebral hypoperfusion. He wrote the book, Alzheimer's Turning Point. I have lectures on all of these topics. So once you know what you care about, you can go to my additional lectures on it, or you can read, for example, Jack Delatore's book. It's a great book. Uh, my theory of neurovascular uncoupling. I talk about this with neuroradiologists, with surgeons, with um, neurosurgeons, with neurologists all the time. It's these two theories, Delatore's and my theory are the best ones. They make sense and they give you lots of things you can do. Okay, I, I have videos on all this stuff. Dementia, thousand brains in dementia, Rogers theory dementia, other insights on dementia. I go through the Douglas Kell, Ethereza, Pretorius, theory of amyloidosis related to beta amyloid, um, the theory of iron behaving badly, the effect of LPS, endotoxin, and leaky gut, all this stuff um, and its relationship to dementia. Um, I've gone through a lot of the biochemistry of diabetes, so if you want to understand the effect of diabetes on the brain, I'll talk to you about the uh, mitochondria-associated membranes from the endoplasmic reticulum and calcium metabolism. I'll go through the fact that your hippocampal neurons have GLUT4 transporters, and that's why they are uh, insulin sensitive. And when there is insulin resistance, as in diabetes, that does cause uh, decreased brain function and eventual neuron loss or apoptosis. I'll go through all that. Um, I also have a lecture. I just did one recently on rehabilitation for TBI. I currently think rehab for TBI could be dramatically improved, and I'll explain how. I explain how in that lecture. Um, so that's all the dementia stuff. Okay, the next thing, stroke prevention. You know, you can only go so far with these medications, statins and aspirin. Okay, you can do much better with diet. Uh, Dr. Esselstyn's uh, diet for, you know, his book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. He's got lots of free online lectures. Basically, it's low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet, okay, with no oil. Uh, my version of it is called Spartan Diet, and I'll go be a little more restrictive, but basically... Esselstyn's got proven data, 198 patients in a row, no recurrent coronary artery events. I think he said no uh, vascular events. I think that meant no stroke either. So that's pretty good data. Um, I do a ton of stuff to explain how you prevent atherosclerosis. In addition, all the stuff you see in conventional medical books on atherosclerosis is essentially a joke. You can't make sense of atherosclerosis until you look at hemorrhagology. I've been studying it for over 25 years, okay? I can tell you the best things you're ever going to see in your whole life on atherosclerosis is the book written by Gregory Sloop. The lectures by William Roberts are also fantastic. He's a cardiac pathologist. Did a whole bunch of autopsies on patients that died of myocardial infarction and ischemia-related arrhythmias. Uh, my explanations of it put it all together. My fellowship, like I said, Harvard was in vascular disease. I've been interested in this for a long time. I spoke to Dr. Sloop in great detail on the phone. I studied all the other atherosclerosis theories. And believe me, you have to know hemorrhagology and atherothrombosis theory to make sense of atherosclerosis. And once it's all said and done, you're going to want to become a vegan, Okay. Um, I also think that Dr. Michael Greger has a great quote. Uh, somebody just told me about it, about diet. He said, basically, all doctors are vegans except for the ones who have not read the uh, nutrition literature yet. And he's right. It, it, it's, it's obvious. You just you haven't been exposed to it in med school. I mean, that's one of the dirty little secrets of medicine that doctors are not trained in diet and, and uh, toxicology. And most diseases are caused by diet and toxins. So um, I got all these lectures for free. You can learn all this stuff. It's all here for free. Okay, Parkinson's disease. 
the, the neurology textbooks on Parkinson's disease are better than they are on most other subjects, but there's still plenty of room for improvement, including the fact that substantia nigra neurons have GLUT4 transporters, and I go through some of that. Uh, I'll go through some of the other issues. Plus, I'll go through all the stuff about avoiding neurotoxins like hexane, like glyphosate, like fluoride, like all the mitochondrial inhibitors, all the circa inhibitors, all that stuff um, in my lectures on those subjects, and MSG, what it does to the brain. Okay, the multiple sclerosis, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Your books don't include the work of Rice Wang, and Dr. McDougall, you know, helped him with that. Um, also, you know, come on, all the standard textbooks, they don't talk about leaky gut. It's the most common cause of autoimmune disease. Um, and I also go through some other less well-known causes of autoimmune disease in my lectures. Um, spinal degeneration, you know, I've done, like I said, I've been involved in the spine for decades and decades. And uh, my own theory of uh, primarily ischemic, there's a couple other chemical mechanisms of spinal degeneration, but ischemia is the most common cause of degenerative disc disease. Degenerative disc disease is due to ischemia, primarily ischemia, is the initiating event for DISH, for OPLL, for OLF, and for chalk stick fractures and all this stuff. Essentially, it's like, just like you get ischemia of the brain and the heart, you get the same thing in the spine. And I explain how all that works. There were some papers before me on ischemia of uh, degenerative disc disease in the lumbar spine, but no one else put it together with relation to thoracic spine, cervical spine, and how it connects to DISH, um, to OPLL, to OLF, um, to auto fusion, chronic acquired fusions, and to the chalk stick fracture. So I do all of that stuff. I even wrote a, a book on that subject. Okay. Next thing, spinal degeneration. Um, I think the best explanation of uh, neuropathies is you have to know about ischemia, okay? Michael Brownlee wrote the best paper, Unifying Theory of Diabetic Complications. I write a lot on this subject as well, but his is the best paper. Once you read that, everything will make sense, and it's just a matter of filling in the details. So anyways, I think if you read these books, uh, or read, just watch these lectures for free, yeah, and you know, William Roberts has a YouTube channel. You can see his videos. I, I talk extensively about the work of Gregory Sloop. Dr. McDougall's got lots of lectures on multiple sclerosis along with Roy Swank. Um, I got checklists on autoimmune disease. All this stuff you can learn for free. So I know they never taught you this in your residency or your fellowship, but it's all here for free. So if you want to learn, it's all here. I hope this helps you and your patients.